Let's be honest, you're staring at a magical box of lights and sounds right now, and you've got absolutely no idea how it works. I mean, I'm sure most of the time you just poke it and hope for the best. Today, I'll explain all the computer parts to you like you're five years old, and by the end of this, you'll finally understand what your tech-savvy friends are talking about and you can stop nodding blankly like you're trying to dislodge a piece of popcorn from your brain. Okay, so a computer is not one single thing. It's a team. Imagine a little office building full of tiny, very specific workers who all have one job to do. The computer case, you know, that big box on or under your desk, is the office building. It keeps all your little workers safe from dust, spilled juice, and your cat who decides it's a great place to take a nap. All the important work happens inside this building. Now the first and maybe most important thing inside the office is the motherboard. And the motherboard is the floor of the office building. It's also the hallways, the phone lines, and the plumbing all rolled up into one. It's a big flat board with a bunch of lines and slots on it, and the motherboard itself doesn't actually do any thinking. Its job is just to be the connector. Every other part plugs into the motherboard, and it's the super connector that lets all the other workers talk to each other. Without the motherboard, all the other parts would just be a sad pile of plastic and metal sitting in a corner, unable to communicate. It's the playground where all the other parts get to play together. No motherboard, no team. It's the foundation for everything. Now, sitting in the most important office on this floor is the boss. And this is the CPU, which stands for Central Processing Unit. But let's just call it the brain. The CPU is the thinker. It's the part of the computer that makes all the decisions and does all the math. When you click your mouse or type on your keyboard, you're sending a little note to the brain. And the brain reads the note and immediately starts bossing everyone else around. It says, hey, we need to open that cat video, or start typing the letter K right now. And it is incredibly fast. It can do billions of calculations every single second. A faster brain means the whole office works faster. A slow brain means that everyone is standing around waiting for instructions, which is why a computer with a slow brain feels like it's moving through molasses. The brain is the single most important worker in the entire building. It really is the star of the show. But... Even the smartest brain in the world can't do its job if it has nowhere to work. The brain needs a desk, and that desk is called RAM, or Random Access Memory. RAM is the computer's short-term memory. It's a workspace, and when the brain decides to work on something, like opening a program or a document, it pulls the information it needs and spreads it all out on the RAM desk. The bigger the desk, the more things the computer can work with at the same time. Have you ever tried to do your homework, draw a picture, and build a Lego castle all on one tiny little TV tray? Well, things get messy. I mean, you knock stuff over, you can't find your crayons, and everything takes forever. And that's what it's like when a computer doesn't have enough RAM. It can only work on one or two things at once. And if you ask it to do more, it has to pack one project away to make room for another, which really slows things down. But if you have a huge, giant desk, then you can have your homework, your drawing, your Legos, and even a snack all spread out and ready to go. You can switch between them instantly. That's why having more RAM lets you have 50 browser tabs open without your computer having a meltdown. The RAM is just a temporary desk though, and when you turn the computer off, the desk gets wiped completely clean. Everything on it disappears forever. So, if the desk gets wiped clean, where do all your files and games go? Well, they go into the long-term memory, and this is the computer's storage, and it acts like a giant filing cabinet or a toy chest. This is where the computer keeps everything that it needs to remember, even when the power is off. Your photos, your music, your homework, and all the programs that you use are kept in the filing cabinet, and when the brain wants to work on something, it sends a little intern to the filing cabinet to go get it and put it on the RAM desk. Now, there are two main kinds of filing cabinets. The older kind is called a hard disk drive, or HDD. And an HDD is like a library with a robot arm. It has a bunch of spinning metal plates, like tiny records, and a little arm has to physically move and find the exact spot where your file is saved. It works, but it takes a moment for the arm to find what it's looking for. The newer, fancier kind of filing cabinet, though, is called a solid state drive, or SSD. And an SSD is magical. It has no moving parts. It's like a bookshelf, where you just think of the book that you want and it instantly appears in your hand. Because there's no little robot arm that needs to search for anything. SSDs are way, way faster. A computer with an SSD turns on faster, opens programs faster, and just feels snappier because the intern doesn't have to wait for the robot librarian to find the files. Everything is just there instantly. 
Okay, so we have our office building, the motherboard floor, the brain boss, the RAM desk, and the storage filing cabinet. But what about seeing what we're doing? Well, you need an artist. And this is the GPU, or graphics processing unit. The GPU's only job is to draw. It takes instructions from the brain and draws everything that you see on your monitor. Every window, every icon, every video, and every single part of a video game is drawn by the GPU. Some computers have a pretty basic artist built right into their brain. It's like the boss is doing some quick doodles on a sticky note. And this is fine for simple things like sending emails or writing documents, but if you want to do something visually complicated like play a big, beautiful video game or edit a movie, you need a professional artist. And that's when you get a separate, powerful GPU. A dedicated GPU is like hiring the world's fastest painter who can produce millions of photorealistic paintings every second. It plugs into the motherboard just like everything else, and it's dedicated to one thing. Making pretty pictures appear on your screen as fast as possible. Without a good GPU, playing a modern game would be like watching a slideshow where each slide takes a minute to appear. Now, none of these workers can do their jobs if they don't have any energy. I mean, they need to eat. And that is where the power supply unit, or PSU, comes in. The PSU is the kitchen and the chef for the entire office. It's a little box that takes the raw electricity from the wall outlet, which is too powerful and wild for the delicate computer parts, and it chops it up, seasons it, and turns it into different, perfectly prepared meals of electricity for each component. The brain needs a certain kind of power snack, the GPU needs a different one, and the motherboard just needs a little sip of energy juice to keep going. The power supply makes sure that everyone gets exactly the kind of power they need to work. And if the power supply isn't good enough, well, it's like trying to feed a whole office of hungry workers with just one tiny lunchbox. People tend to get cranky and they stop working, and then the whole system shuts down. Speaking of workers, what happens when a lot of people are working really hard in one office? Well, it gets really hot. The computer parts are the exact same way. The brain and the artist, you know, the CPU and GPU, get very warm when they're thinking hard. And if they get too hot, they get a fever and can't work properly they might even get damaged permanently. So, to stop this from happening, the computer needs a cooling system. This is basically the office's air conditioning. Usually this is just a fan or several fans, and they blow cool air over the hot parts to carry their heat away. Sometimes the most important parts, like the brain, will also have a big chunk of metal with lots of fins on it called a heat sink. This metal block is really good at pulling heat away from the brain, and then a fan blows on the metal block to cool it down. It's like giving the brain its own personal fan to keep it from getting a headache. Keeping the computer cool is super important for keeping all the workers happy and productive. So, let's put it all together. You click on an icon to watch a video. Your click sends a message to the brain, the CPU. And the brain, sitting on the motherboard floor, says, Okay team, time to work. It tells the intern to go to the filing cabinet, the storage, and grab the video player program. The program is then brought over and spread out on the big work desk, the RAM. The brain then starts processing the video file, and it tells the professional artist, the GPU, exactly what to draw. The GPU starts drawing the video on your screen at lightning speed. All the while, the power supply is feeding everyone the perfect energy meals they need, and the cooling fans are blowing a nice, cool breeze over everyone to make sure that nobody's getting too hot and sweaty from working so hard. All this communication and action is happening on the motherboard, which connects every single part so they can work as a perfect team. And really, that's it. That's a computer. It's not one magic thing. It's a team of highly specialized parts all working together inside a box. You have the motherboard as the foundation, the CPU as the brain, RAM as the temporary workspace, storage as the long-term memory, a GPU as the artist, a power supply as the kitchen, and fans to keep everyone from getting a fever. See? You get it now. It's just a little office in a box. I mean, you're basically ready to build one yourself. Okay, maybe don't do that yet. Just bask in the glow of your newfound knowledge. Now go forth and confidently tell someone that their computer is slow because its work desk is too small, not because it's old. They'll be very impressed. Or maybe very confused. Either way, it's a win-win.